Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. The Herbert Art Gallery and Museum in Coventry is currently a home to your childhood memories. It's running until the 13th of September and then it'll go on tour around the UK. You can visit the past and get all misty-eyed and nostalgic with legendary characters such as the Wombles, Bugs Bunny, Bill and Ben, Pinky and Perky, Camberwick Green and Morph. But it's not all nostalgia because the exhibition also celebrates present day programmes such as In the Night Garden and the Twirly Woos. The exhibition brings together seven decades of iconic objects, memorabilia, merchandise, clips and images plus many original props and characters as you're about to see. I'm Lee Bannister, and this is the history of children's television from 1946 till today. Well now, Boston Bear and Spaghetti Duck are the children's TV characters appearing daily on Big Centre TV. Now the programmes are made by the same adults that make Cup of TV or Extra Time, in much the same way as the early BBC and ITV kids programmes were made by the same department way back in the day. Well today we're investigating the popularity of children's television programmes beginning with Muffin the Mule in 1947, right up to the latest offerings from CBeebies and CBBC. So join me as I take a trip down Festive Lane into the uh, story of children's television. Well, this exhibition showcases some of the uh, iconic characters and television programmes from all over those years. Uh, should we take a look at some of the sights and sounds that they've got on offer here today? Going back to the early days here. Look at that. I won't be too young to remember anything on the radio, really. <laughs> I do remember Muffin the Mule, though. I've seen some of these episodes on DVD. My cousin had an actual little Muffin the Mule that she could play with when she was little. Oh, and Andy Pandy as well. When I was little, this is going back to the mid sort of 70s, I was mad on Andy Pandy. Not the black and white ones, the colour ones, but uh, I've got a really early photograph that my mum always brings out for. Um, uh, family members of me sitting in a little chair reading an Andy Pandy book and it would be about sort of two and a half, three, she reckons I could read. I'm not so sure. Andy Pandy was great though. There we go. A little Muffin the Mule, uh, a little Muffin the Mule toy over there. And the original Muffin the Mule puppet, look at that. Created in 1933. Looking pretty good for his age. <laughs> String is still intact, yeah, we like this. <laughs> and here he is, this is Andy Pandy. It's not the real one, it's a little toy, but uh, yeah. Ah, now you're talking, Captain Pugwash. It's a bit violent these days, isn't it? All little pieces of card just moved on the little pieces of card underneath, so you push the card up, his legs move, and the eyes are on pieces of card as well. Now Sooty. Sooty is over 60 years old, you wouldn't believe it. Born on North Pier in Blackpool. His creator was Harry Corbett and he saw this little puppet in a, a toy shop window and he was going home and he said to his wife, I do feel sorry for that little puppet and his wife said, no, go on, go on back and buy him and that's how Sutty was born. They dyed his ears black and the legend was born. Ah, now, here we have a Dalek, Doctor Who from 1963. It's older than most of us. <laughs> Saturday mornings with an old tidy beard. Of course, there was a massive battle in the 70s and 80s. Swap shop, and over there, we'll come to it in a second, Tiz was what people didn't realise. You could watch both, you see. The swap shop started at half past nine. Tiz was started at half past ten. Best of both worlds. I always wanted to be on swap shop when I was little. Here's a face I recognise. Morph. <coughs> the 
Looks like he's enjoying his dinner there. Oh, take heart and heartbeat and vision on. Brilliant. Now, the Muppets. Kermit the Frog. Kermit the Frog. Hmm. I've actually got a puppet of Kermit the Frog. Smashing. He was created by Jim Henson. I discovered a few years ago that Jim Henson's birthday is the same as mine, 24th of September. Who knew? Now here we are. Tis was. Sally James there. Gord Nastley, one of the uh, presenters from the final year. I don't see Chris Tarrant anywhere. Hmm. Maybe he couldn't make it today. But obviously you see Bob Monkhouse as well. Tis was filmed in Birmingham, one of our local uh, programmes. they demolished the studios now, so such a shame. But um, it's like I said, Tis was and Swap Shop, they were the things to watch on a Saturday morning. Everybody loves Sally James. <laughs> ah, now, Grain Chill. All the parents thought it was no good for their uh, children, but we didn't mind, you see. We all knew what school was like at that time. It didn't reflect everything that went on at school, but um, it would still be a, quite a cool place to go to. And I always wanted one of those badges. Or the earlier one, yeah. <laughs> Ah, now in this one we've got the Wombles. We've got uh, Wellington on the left and Shansi on the right. They're from the later series from the, uh, the late 90s. I was at a children's television exhibition a few years ago and the original Wombles from the 70s were even smaller than that. It's amazing how they sort of made them move with so much detail, but they did, and they're great. And of course over there we've got the Wirebird from, uh, from Play Days, or Play Bus as I remember it. <laughs> and at the back, Toad from the Wind in the Willows. That's the original Toad that they used in the filming of the series. Now there we've got various bits and pieces in which you can make your very own Tracy Island. And of course if you come over here, here it is. That's the actual Tracy Island that they made on Blue Peter. <laughs> Looks really real, doesn't it? I think it was full of sticky back plastic and little pieces of cardboard. And that's a pipe cleaner, I can tell that. I never had the patience to make anything like this. <laughs> of course, this is the Blue Peter section now. And uh, as you might have noticed, I'm sort of showing Will in today. But uh, down here, we have the real things, the actual Blue Peter badges. You've got the, uh, the blue, the silver, the green, the orange, the sporting badge, and of course, the all important gold badge. You have to do something really special for that, you know. All the old Blue Peter books. Now, isn't that a rack fact? Well, it is in my world anyway. I've got every single Blue Peter book that they ever published. <laughs> now, does that make me really sad or just a massive Blue Peter fan? I like to think it's a massive Blue Peter fan. Of course, this is the little Blue Peter Island as well. Around here, we've got the, um, the model of uh, one of the sets that they use. Of course, the design of all of this looks like the Blue Peter set itself from sort of the mid-70s. Look at his head on the Oh, isn't it gorgeous? Uh, what, what can we do after this? Can we go into anything else? Come on, fella. Oh, yes. Uh, he'll lie dead for us, I think. He'll lie dead? Yes. That's more than Petra will do. Kneel down. Kneel down, fella. Come on. Kneel down. Gently. Kneel down. Gently. Extremely gentle, Bull, is this? Gently. Well, Colin's speaking to him very gently. Yes, Calm, yeah. isn't he? He's going gently, down. Fella. There he He's is. Gentle. Make sure he doesn't roll over on you. Very so. gently down. All this weight about Come on, lie dead. ten hundred. Lie dead. Of course, right in the centre, we have the all important BBC colour camera. Ah, I recognise this bad boy. This is Brum. <laughs> this is one of the actual uh, cars that they used within the filming. What strikes you with all of this is the actual attention to detail. I was saying to uh, somebody here earlier on. You look at it up close, and all the detail on the actual, um, on the inside, all the leather up upholstery and everything. I actually saw one of these um, when they were filming the show um, in about 2001, when they did the series, in uh, Chamberlain Square, in the middle of uh, Birmingham. Everybody was gathered around. I, I saw the car first, and I thought, ah, it's a camera over there. They must be filming. And yeah, and it was Brum, in all his glory. Which reminds me of Bessie from Doctor Who. Same sort of car, little roadster. Yeah. Aha, the ragdolls that are, Rosie and Jim. <laughs> and uh, oh, the duck. How did the duck have a name? I can't remember. But uh, yeah, I saw Rosie and Jim once on a canal boat going along the river, the actual canal boat, near Merry Hill Centre. I always remember that. And then I saw it a few months later on TV. But aren't they large? But again, you see the, the attention to detail with all of that. <laughs> Love them. 
Aha, this is the original puppet of uh, Pop from 1984. Yes, I remember you. We nicknamed a mate of mine at school after you. We were very unkind. <laughs> Aha, can we fix it? We've got Scoop and Dizzy from uh, Bob the Builder. Don't you think they look better in real life? Yeah, I do. Bit of Peppa Pig, my next door neighbour would love that. <laughs> Well that's it so far for part one, you enjoying the look around? I know I am. So come back in a few minutes where I'll be seeing more of your childhood favourites. Aha, we have a Clanger. One of the new Clangers from the brand new series. They've got the Suit Dragon in the middle. Now in the middle that's the model that they made the Suit Dragon. Uh, they moulded it around that one. Look, suppose you wanted to have a government. Uh, you could choose uh, the government of the Soup Dragon, for instance. <laughs> or you could choose the government uh, of the Froglets. Uh, are there any Froglets there? And on the end there, little Rasta Mouse. I think he's giving us a song. Clangers are great, though. Sadly, I've not got my Swanee whistle with me, so I can't give you an impression of a clanger today, but uh, they went up quite well. Are you playing the tune, are you? You broke it, you put it off. Oh, hello. Oh, we've got somebody else here. Oh, look at this. Who's that? Sweet. <laughs> he doesn't look very happy, does he? Oh, dear. How old are you, by the way? Seven. Really? You're that old? Take a bow, because you're very old. Are you tired now? going to go to sleep. I think it's time. We'll let, we'll let him go, shall we? Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Oh, you got a word to say? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Well, Hugh, what actually inspired the Herbert Museum to a stage the exhibition in the first place? Well, the, the idea originally came from the Department of um, Film and Television Studies at Un the University of Warwick, um, who were doing a lot of work researching children's television. and. Um, wanted to do, had the idea of putting on an exhibition um, and they approached the, the Herbert um, because they knew that, that at the Herbert we can put on really good exhibitions that, that are family friendly and that, you know, really appeal to people um, and asked us if we would um, stage the exhibition. So why is now actually a good time to stage an exhibition like this? Um, partly because, as I say, uh, to the University of Warwick they were doing a, a, a research project into children's television and um, so that, you know, it was something that tied in with that. Um, and I think also there's just been, a, at the moment, there's a lot of sort of looking back over, over children's television. There's a lot of nostalgia about it. There's a lot of programmes that have been remade in the last couple of years, things like Thunderbirds, Teletubbies, um, The Clangers. Uh, and so I, I, it, we just wanted to sort of chime into that, that uh, kind of um, retrospectiveness that's going on at the moment. It's always a good thing. Um, so it's quite a big exhibition, so how many exhibits are there? Well, there's over 200 items to look at, which are a mixture of, um, some of them are merchandise, some of them are toys that are spin-offs and programmes, but a lot of them are the original actual items that were, were used in the filming. Um, so, it, you know, it, 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 there's a lot to see. So it must have taken quite a while to uh, put the whole thing together. How long did it take to assemble the exhibits? Well, we started planning it in 2012, um, so it has taken a long time. Um, and certainly tracking down all these items and tracking down the film clips and the images um, took uh, going on for a year. I mean, we started sort of the detective work of actually trying to find the things last year. They've got such a wide range of things on, on display in, in the main exhibition. Where did they all come from? Well, we found things from all sorts of places. Some, some, were, some came from the BBC and, and we approached some other museums and that, that, was, that was fairly straightforward. But a lot of them belong to, to private individuals and um, finding those people and then persuading them that they, they were happy to, to lend their, their beloved, in some cases their beloved items, um, took some doing. I mean, things like um, we've got the original muffin and obviously that, that is unique and um, you know, persuading Muffin's owner that um, it was going to be safe and it was, it was going to be okay um, took a little bit of doing um, and so did some of the other ones in, in private hands but um, 
and, and there's some things we just couldn't get. You know, there were some things we tried for, but in the end, um, we weren't able to, to get here. But I think we've got a good range. So what were your, fa your own favourite uh, characters from your childhood? From my era, um, there are a number of... Funnily enough, there aren't many originals from my era, which was probably the 60s and 70s. But there are a lot of characters here that we've got as toys and merchandise that, that take me back, particularly things like Thunderbirds. Um, we've got a, a sooty puppet. It's not an original, but it's one of the sooty puppets. The, the clips of things like um, Basil Brush and uh, Magic Roundabout, that's all sort of my era. Um, I think the, the, the appeal of them, it is taking people back to reminding them of when they were children and, and, and hopefully in most cases of happy times of, when, of, of watching television and it's something that works I mean everybody that comes here has watched children's television either as a child themselves or with their children or they're watching it with their grandchildren now and, and it's, it, it, it takes people back to when they watched it reminds people of what was going on in their lives at the time of, of being with their families and I think that's, that's where the appeal comes from with this what do you find are the most um, popular exhibits? It's got to be a generational thing because sort of, uh, the older people will go for the older things and the, uh, the younger ones will go for the newer programmes. It is very generational, but um, I've noticed that I mean, Gordon the Gopher seems to be very popular um, and so does Mr Spoon from Button Moon. Um, both fitting slightly similar sort of age groups. Um, but they seem to be really well. Uh, a lot of people really love Humpty from Play School as well, going back a little bit further. Um, and of course we do have visitors who remember watching Muffin when, when it was first on back in the 1940s and 50s and that, that, that's proved very popular as well. So how long is the exhibition uh, on until and uh, what happens to it all next to that? It finishes here on September the 13th, so there's got about two or three weeks left to run. Um, but it is going to tour around the country for the next three years. So it's off to Portsmouth next. Um, at the museum down in Portsmouth and then we've got other venues hopefully covering quite a lot of the, of, of the country up until April 2018 when it finally ends. So there you go. Pardon? What? Oh yeah, he said to tell you that um, the exhibition is here at the Herbert Museum and Art Gallery in Coventry until the 13th of September. So it's well worth coming along. We've had a great day in here today. So in the words of these guys, what? Oh yeah, he says it too. Bye bye. I imagine this is the closest I'll ever get to a, a telly. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I dressed up as one once. Did you? Yes, uh, Tinky Wink, we, we were raising some money for uh, a charity or something. We had these full size mm. telly to be costumed by Yeah. Very warm. Yeah. We were walking through the state and uh, we just get getting funny looks, didn't we? Mm. 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 Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit, uh, a bit weird. Yeah.